peep this swamp, or should I say peep this word of mouth? My name is Wise Guy, peep this swamp, the whole team, they got some things they want to speak about. Yeah. You guys ready? Yeah, I'm yeah, ready. We're going to we gonna have a really in, good one today. Team, bring it in. There we go. <sighs> How's everybody's week been? We looking sharp. It just looking started sharp. actually, so it's been going, continuing. It's continuing. continuing. It's a continuing Whoa. week of Where's last. It's continuing week? too. It's just continuing. It's just a, there's a lot of things that's a process, and it's continuing. Okay. But it's continuing on. Yeah. I'm glad. What about you? Not too bad, bro. Just been handling a lot of business. Mm -hmm. Doing stuff for Peep this while I'm doing stuff for myself. Taking doing some great. money. Making money, bro. Making money. Can I have some? Oh, eventually. <laughs> yeah, eventually. Yeah. We, Can I have some? We're trying to be a Fortune 100. You yeah, feel me? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You feel yeah, me? Yeah. You feel yeah. that? Boss life, for sure. What about yeah. you, my guy? What about you? How oh, you doing, man. Fisher? Oh, How you doing? Fisher is doing great, man. With the gold and the green out here looking like mm -hmm. Scrooge McDuck if he was born in Africa. <laughs> <laughs> I like that. So, so I much, much money. Right? right? You know. That's why I had to wear the gold and green, you know? Just bring it out, you know? Just uh, show him a little flavor. Show him that royalty. But I, so, uh, yeah, that royalty, exactly. Royalty, you bro. Know, how we move. Like you mm -hmm. just said before, I think it was like two years ago when we started Peep This Wom. Uh, Makaya had said, you know, it's a certain movement we have to move with and a certain energy we have to bring about ourselves. Mm -hmm. And as we walk and present ourselves, carry ourselves, look, feel, everything. And it's like, truly how I feel. Like, I feel great. Life is great. Work is great. Business wow. is great. I have the great. right mentality. Yeah, family. Absolutely. Oh, family's good. Oh, family's phenomenal. Family is phenomenal. Like, it's been a blessing. Like, honestly. you got you got to talk to this guy. He family. You gotta, yeah. We got to get him to start, get some Man, little young get, ones soon. Whoa, 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 get the young ones. Hey. Whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He's like no wish that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. Don't Listen, put that on me. If you me. can't drink with me, we can't hang out. I ain't got nothing for you to talk mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. If you can't drink with me. <laughs> why, why are you trying to? You got to you gotta do the, mm -mm, right? and I bring the shame you're back not 21. Out, <laughs> so what about you, bro, business-wise? How's things going? Paintings? Business-wise, painting's good. I just sold one recently to okay, my nice. merchant down there in Florida. He shows Can we support. Give him a, a round of applause? Yes, man. Thanks. Mm -hmm. Shout outs to Baracko out there, man. That's my guy from like high school. Yo, seven K is real. Yes, 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 mm -hmm. yes. Can I host um, this? Huh? <laughs> <That's what you're... laughs> but um um also a learning process too, man. Um I, I learned and found out like to ship something like in the actual frame itself, it costs like an additional like one fifty, two hundred dollars. And to, but it's interesting because one of my uh, former IT colleagues, he's really heavy, heavy into art. He does a lot of uh, uh, concept art on like PlayStation Four, like skins and covers. Mm, okay. And he <clears throat> he posted like a really good idea to me. He's like, yo, like you ever thought about putting it into like uh, those capsules? Ooh. So roll it up. Mm. So since my work primarily deals with like oil pastels, um, it always stays wet. Like right. so, it it always changes like oil paintings and stuff. Mm -hmm. So I'm thinking like you know I could probably throw a layer of like wax paper on it, roll it up, Whoa. and allow the person, the client themselves, to like frame it themselves, save mm. more money. So well, you know it's true. it's a learning process. I, I took a little bit of a okay. hit, but I was like yeah, like just if you don't mind. Contributing that much to it, it was like, yeah, and I made the deal. So now I'm remastering the um the other ones that I have right now. Ooh. Speaking of learning opportunities, mm -hmm. can you? <coughs> I have the quote of the day, but, but one thing I want to share. Yeah, yeah. What you want to share? Peep this one is officially an LLC. Yo, we're we're businessmen. We make money. We now make money. We by not... the time you're seeing this. Woo! By yeah, the time exactly. you're seeing this. By the time you guys are seeing that it, that was awesome. But, <laughs> but the money's already there. I ain't saying that. Just don't rob us, though. Just don't well, rob no, us. I ain't say we make a lot of money. Listen, no. I ain't got no money. Don't come for me. Don't I'm do broke. that. But Listen. the process was tedious. Yes, it the was. The trademark is on the way we got approved. Mm -hmm. Eight-month mm -hmm. process. And, and we got some great surprises coming through soon. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Definitely think. Waiting for that thing to be done. You check, know. check check us out uh, in a, a few worried. months to a year. No, That's it's a good thing. thing. It's a great thing. It's a great thing. Great thing. Trust. I feel good. Yes. Speaking of great so, things. So. Oh, yes. Can you lead us in? Yeah. So I have this lovely quote of the day that I would like to share with you guys. My quote of the day is, if the change you have, oh, if you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Let me say that again. If you change the way you look at things, the things you look at change. Can you give us an example? So there was one time I was in the gym with uh, 
with DeJounte. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't do that kind of squat thing that we were holding weights and we had to hold a position on the wall for a while. Oh, I know what you're talking about. I said I, sits. I, said oh, I yeah. couldn't, right? So when I had that mentality, I couldn't, I didn't. Mm -hmm. But the minute I changed it, it became much easier. And he made it say, all right, stop looking at it as five minutes like how he was doing. Yeah. Look at it as do a minute. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Chip away Let, Let's it. keep doing a minute. Do minute, stop. Minute, stop. Then... We did two minutes. Mm -hmm. Two minutes, stop. Two minutes, stop. Two minutes become three. Three. Two become then, four. Yeah, I didn't four get to five, five yet, but that's where, mm -hmm. you see what I'm saying? Yeah, Once we start changing body. our mindset and our outlook, then we can have a better outcome. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a testament to it truly. Like, it's really just trying. Just right. trying. Right. Because then you're like, frick, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know how I got here, but you're trying. And then in the process of you trying, you're tumbling, you're falling down. Right. It's like middle school, you know? It's like Facts. you have that curiosity. Now you engage in that curiosity. You're like, oh, dang, that wasn't so bad after all. And then you're, 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 yourself, you stretch a little bit more further. You right. learn about this. You didn't know that now, but now it's common knowledge to you now. So, Do you think that we're just, I guess we're not like taught to or ever challenged to change the way we look at things? Maybe that's why we don't. Think about going further. We're conditioned. We're, yeah, we're, we're conditioned. We're con yeah, we're conditioned. And then thinking about it in the earlier episodes before, like the conditioning, the school systems. Remember the school system right. episode? Uh, yeah. Oh, they, yeah. They uh, teach you the fear to fail. No, you should be failing as much as possible. At least that shows that you're trying. Most people who got into the positions that they, that they were in, they didn't know what they were doing. But along the way, they figure it out. And you know what, like, uh, some of that, with that also, you got to understand that they're not going to teach you this, but I'll give you this tip. Mental flexibility is huge. To be flexible Ooh. of the mind. You mm. have to be able to have your mind bend, warp, switch, and change, because you're going to evolve. And mental flexibility is huge, especially in the growing process. Yeah. Also, yeah. bro, can you talk about, this goes, ties into that just. You remember you did a... Oh, yeah, the just episode. So talk about it. Oh, the, yeah, take it, your vocabulary. Your, um, changing how you, your vocabulary. Changing how you perspectively mm -hmm. look at things. Taking just out of something. Well, I just did six push-ups. No, you did six push-ups. I did six push-ups. It's allowing yourself to take accountability and responsibility for everything you're doing. You no longer have an excuse. You no longer have a way out. You no longer have a... Um, a way to stay, sit back and kind of relax. I'm not a type to relax. I'm a very assertive, aggressive type of being. I'm a very also a humble and loving being too, mm. you know? So I'm not gonna sit around and sit back. I can't watch things happen. I have to make things happen. I have Ooh, to act. That's facts, did you, you know? Did, do you often hear people say, I just did this or like I just did Absolutely. that? Absolutely. Really? I don't, Thousands maybe, of times. Maybe everyone. I don't surround myself with people like that. Or I don't try to. Way, it might not I be hear the it. word just, yeah. but people downplay what they say. Yeah. And I just did, or I did, for, I only. I, I only. But, but sometimes when you look at it, it's perspective, because if you did four push-ups or six push-ups, like push you said, you have that's more than what you did before. Right. Exactly. Yeah. And if you start switching your mindset of it, you're going to start challenging yourself. Your brain, you hold your brain back. You, like, your brain, so, like, I go to this place, stretch zone once, right? And they stretch you. But obviously, they, you, they stretch you, but once you start to relax, your body now can actually stretch and let it gravity take over, you know what I'm saying? I think it's us holding our own selves back of the fear like your brain does, you know, to keep you safe. Uh, in a sense, you trick yourself. Yeah, we, you have we to end like up trick yourself. You you're reprogram exactly. So you're reprogram reprogramming yourself. Yeah, so now we have to reprogram ourselves with the vocabulary Ooh. and what we speak and how we cover ourselves in, in the realm, I guess, with the energy. You know what I'm saying? Like, I get what you're saying. Walk mm -hmm. with and talk with the energy that you believe in it. Facts. You gotta Facts. believe what you want before. You gotta believe that you talk are what you it. want for you to be what you want. Ooh. Exactly. No, it's true. I mean, I like that. I remember but, that song. Uh, what you want? Be what, what, what you want. So, what song is so that? BK Media Studios. Can I? Is this my camera right here? Yes. Listen, mm -hmm. listen. <laughs> you better change your perspectives. Mm. BK Media Studios. You see me clearly? Can you see me? What's up, baby? What's up, baby? What's up, baby? <laughs> I'm sorry. I had to, I had to let them know. You got to change the mindset. Look at us. 
million dollars in here, you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. Something like that. 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 No, but Same seriously, way. if you change the way you look at things, you're only going to get better. That's seriously. You're only you going to get better. I think we would your, all. Your relationships, bro. Mm. Your mm -hmm. friendships. Your money? Mm -hmm. Your money, definitely. Yo, if you stop Absolutely. thinking with a broke mentality, oh yes, you'll see more things happen. If you stop, if you want to see the change, be the change. We'll talk about. So look in your relationships and be like, what am I doing wrong? If you want to see, can change I be the change? Mm -hmm. and what is it? If you want to see change, if you want to see change in your bank account, change what you put in your bank account. Mm -hmm. Is it big enough? Tell me, is it big mm -hmm. enough? Oh, is that just sounded. That just sounded weird. I just said it's a big enough. Hey, I'm on my track. No, I'm talking about the money pot. I thought you were talking about the money pot. I know I, that's what I was enough. talking about. But the audience, so, just in case. But you say I, I lost, something, bro. I lost my track of thought. I, I got caught up into that right there. I was like, oh, Lord. You said, oh, Lord. I know what you're going to keep on oh, track no. with, though. What? The social media. Ooh. Oh, yes. And thank you for segueing into that. So we got the social media of today. And, you know, I was fortunate enough, lucky to see what my brethren right here, wise guy. We got to see Creed 3. Hey, go see and it. Of course, mm. you go, go see, see it. That. Go see it. It's it's really great. It was his uh, um, it was his directorial debut, yep. too. On top of it. He did a great job. He nice. did a great job. I couldn't see where he drew a lot of inspiration from, too, as well. That last fight scene. Mm -hmm. Definitely, like, you could feel it here. Yeah, yeah. Mm. It was really good. It shows that mm. sibling rivalry. Um, But, yeah, I just wanted to share with you guys um, because... It's something that really grinds my gears about this, and I just want, I just want to see what y'all think about this right now. Let me tell Dog, you. Dog, you doing that to a girl True. is some corny nigga shit. I can see that. You being That's Michael true. B. Jordan today, uh, allegedly sexiest man on, alive in all of these my... blockbuster movies I agree. during your highlight week. You've probably never been more visible than you are right this second. And that's what you do to her. And if I bring back them white girl rumors, then it's going to sound even crazier. Then it's going to sound crazier. Because why are you talking to our sisters like that on the red carpet? We only talking to white bitches like that. But I'm not going to make it racy. They say I make everything racy. Got that was corny of him to speak to that girl like that. I'm not disagreeing. I would have I made Michael a Michael B. Jordan, that's why niggas call you corny. Off air. I would have made a joke off air like, word. Hey, Creed. You know hey, what's this nigga's name? I wouldn't have did that in front of Hey, Creed. <laughs> you got the for in case you were confused, <laughs> that corny ass shit you did is why niggas think you corny. Yeah. In case you were off a little bit mm -hmm. as to why you niggas keep thinking that money hides corny. Mm. That's mm. Good. Who want to go first? I'm going first. You Please. go first. Who want to go first? Let's so, deconstruct this. I'm ready. Uh, I'm kind of like really disappointed that that was his stance on that. Um, why is he making it about black women? Why? Yeah, first and foremost, he makes it about black women. Like. That's the problem with our community. Disrespect. We're not sisters. holding accountable. anyone accountable. And mm. we think we can let them loose rampant with this behavior. Then another thing that I hate, you know, sometimes I don't want to be the bigger guy. Sometimes I want to give you the same vial of poison you gave me. You're human. Because you was hating on me when I was grinding back in high school and I had I was showing everyone my headshot and stuff. And you there, he, 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 and he, he, and you, you spreading gossip and rumors about my name. You trying to, like, trash me like that? Like, so why can't I call you out? Why can't I just say, yo, oh, remember me, the corny guy, right? Because success is the best revenge. Mm -hmm. So yeah. why can't I do that? He didn't, he didn't disrespect her. No. He didn't, he, didn't, he didn't call her a no. B word. He didn't do anything. He just said, oh, yeah, he I'm the corner. He didn't put his hands on her. He, didn't, he wasn't he didn't disrespectful. Completely respectful. Mm -hmm. But yet, why does this always have to happen, especially right. in, in, in our culture, in our community, to our black men? It's like the dudes that want to be on the straight and narrow path, they want to make something of themselves, they're corny. Oh, he's a gamer. Oh, he's corny. Oh, he's into anime. Oh, he's corny. Oh, he wants to be an actor. Oh, he's corny. That's not fast money. It's like, I get tired of stuff. And I, and I literally said in the comments, I, and someone spoke about that. And I was like, I was like, Pete, this one, I'm subscribing right here. And I was like, yo, why, why is it? Dang, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> oh, I carried over for you. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I got it, I got it. Why is it? Who's that? That's a fan. That's oh, a new fan. Yes, we got yes. a fan. We got a fan. They looking. They looking at us. Why is it that it's it's a big issue when we when we call these things out? And that's just my thing, man. Here's one. Oh, did mm -hmm. you want to go? No, no. Who I go? want you to go. No, I, I, I want to hear. 
Nah, you got it. Why you waiting? Yo, yo, keep your hands to yourself. Yeah, hands to yourself. Only you. you. I'm watching it look right, though. Rock, what, paper, the rock, paper, scissors. Paper, scissors. Nah. We ain't never got to scissor them, so. Wow. Anyways. 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 Oh, bad. Oh, bad, bro. Scissors for later. Uh, peep this will ever. Definitely not with me, though. <laughs> so here's what I want to talk about. Here's what so, tackle. Sorry, you just have to clarify that. Because you said it's for later. It's like. getting worse. All right, here's all what right. I want to tackle. In all seriousness, yeah, mm-hmm. seriously. nobody's addressing the fact that what that was, what was done to him is bullying. Traumatic. Oh, yeah. It's traumatic. Bullying. Ta- it was bullying. Yeah. You, even if you just make fun of somebody in a passing way, any one joke could actually be somebody's worst day. You don't know how that may have affected him in his home life. You don't know how that may have affected him in his friendships and his self-confidence, but he still did what he could to pursue his dreams in spite of that. In this day and age where everybody wants to talk about, oh, this is bullying and suicide prevention, and oh, we gotta know how mm-hmm. to speak to each other and 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 what is it and um and therapy and being having compassion, but we don't want to hold people accountable for what is by definition bullying. We want to call him corny because he addressed a bully. Mm-hmm. Right. You know? Yeah. Um, you know, it's most of the time, yeah, we have it in the workforce. We have leadership with guile. Mm-hmm. We have management with guile. You know, alternative motives, all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, it's the same bullying, just on the same platform. What do you think, bro? Uh, on, on the all, video. Oh, dude, on that video, dude, for her, I, he, I think he handled it like a gentleman. I mm-hmm. love the way he handled it. You did. I right. would have did it the same way. I, I mm-hmm. probably would have gone off even worse. But like, yo, class of 02. <laughs> All right, so you know what happened back then. Yeah, I was lovely. But I would have <laughs> been like, I'm going to come up. I'm <laughs> handsome. You know, it's, it's really like a mindset. Right. Obviously, you were, you know what I remember? And I see this too to this day. The same dude from high school is a star basketball player. Mm. And now he's in the gym with me, all tatted up. Rass beat up, limped up, working a terrible job, and I feel bad for him because I'm like, dude, you was that hot dude back then. You know what they say about and look that? At you. Damn, homie. In high, high school, school, you was a man, man, homie. What happened to you? <laughs> Come on, man. Uh, man. Oh, my gosh. And I'm just watching this man, and I'm like, dude, you working for the paper, and I hear you struggling, and I hear your conversations, oh, and how you carry yourself, the car you drive, and everything, where you live and how you moving, and I'm like, it's not just you. It was the whole crew of y'all. And I'm so grateful, like, even though we're all in private school with the same opportunities. Listen. How you move is how you move. Listen, it goes to show you once again, mm-hmm. the race is not for the swift, but for those who can endure. That's this true. life mm-hmm. is a journey. It's not a race. It's not a 100-yard dash. It's, it's, a, it's a, a marathon. 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 And that's why I feel like with this as well, too, you should always be very very cautious and respectful to how you talk and how you deal with people because you don't know who they will be. You don't know. Well, yeah. even before you, you don't know. Go ahead, keep going. Even, you heard, don't know. I've heard that so many times growing up, and then you disagree. I, why do you have to be careful about how you talk to somebody because of who they may be? How about you just treat people with kindness and respect? That part. Well, maybe, I, maybe, ideally. maybe, maybe the aspect or the view I'm going from is is primarily an ego driven type of a thing. Maybe it's of, not a bad of idea. How it could benefit you, but I feel like in the same time, yeah. you still give that respect. You should give that general respect to everyone. Period. No matter, no matter if even if you don't believe in his dream or whatever, you don't gotta clown him. And ridicule him, like, come on, that's very traumatizing. It was high school time, like, come but on. But you're thinking about it at the same time, La Russell, all these other people, everybody coming up, and we all have gone through the same thing. Every successful yeah. person has gone mm-hmm. through the iron, I mean, through the fire. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And what's nice, though, I like is that every, this same chick, everybody was drooling over him as um, Killmonger. Killmonger. They were yep. drool over his Killmonger. Was, yeah. Yeah. And now those Killmonger. old girls are probably like, oh, God, I still was drooling over him, though. <laughs> mm. You know what I want to... you feel bad? I want under, to understand why the headlines don't read Michael B. Jordan confronts bully on red carpet. Mm. Yeah. But what about you? What you think about the clip? Yeah. We'll get to the Joe um, Budden part in a second mm-hmm. because that's another discussion. Well, I'm, that's what I was. Oh, you want to go? Go ahead. So, 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 it it. Go to so the Joe Budden. What I didn't like. Shout out to Joe Budden. All right, no, no, great story. podcast. I watch it from like time to time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they got I, Queens I Flip on there now. Oh, he's funny dude. Yeah, funny dude. Queens Flip, pull up. Yeah. Pump um, it up. The the one thing I don't like was the name calling. 
he, this guy, Michael B. Jordan, never called her out of her name, yep. mm-hmm. never disrespected. But to prove a point of how corny he is, he called him a B word. He the N word. The N word. Multiple yeah. times. He degraded that man. And on a level where I was just like, where's the level of respect? And then he had to come, because there was a backlash of how people took it, he made a video which dissed on that one. He had to apologize. Yeah, because he also hit what, uh, the Caucasian race, too, and called them B-words, too. Yeah, which you was crazy call, to me. Everybody in and call them names. baffled me that that's the approach that this man has, what, millions of subscribers, yeah. thousands of subscribers. Yeah. And you went at that route when that man never went on that route at I, that lady. I have an interjection. Do you think he should have done that? You think he should have done the sorry video? Or he should have just, or should he just have stood by what he if, said? If you really, I, 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 I do. Double down it. I do. If you that. genuinely do, I hate when people do things because of backlash. Mm. Like if you really feel a petition, I like when sorries come with an explanation properly. So yo, I'm sorry that I did X, mm-hmm. Y, and Z. And this is how I was feeling when I meant it. Yeah. Maybe I went on a tangent. And I, but when people just give these kind of apologies because they don't want the bad. No, own that shit. Stuff. Own it. Own that mm-hmm. stuff. Drew. And you don't know what type of post-traumatic episode he could have had on that red carpet. Right. Going through that. Definitely. Flashback. Well, the flashback. memories, flashback does yeah, come. The memories did come back. Right, because right, right. he heard the audio. Remember, that audio was out there. He got alpha. 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 He got alpha. Yeah, alpha. Yeah, alpha. 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 I told you I was going to look like alpha. No, 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 but you on the side, though. Yeah, it's on the side. You can't really see it, y'all. Y'all can't see it. It's called Black Falfa. Come here, Black Falfa. But you hear the audio of this before. You hear these girls ha ha he he and over you. And you know that one of these people you went to school with before, and yeah, that post-traumatic episode is happening because you heard audio of this. Your fans heard audio of this. People have heard audio of this, and now you're coming out. You're on a carpet for a movie. You're planning on doing more. You're, you're trying to build your success. You're not doing this. Y'all not doing it to each other, Alba. Y'all not doing it to other brothers in the industry that's trying to grow. Also, Joe being a rapper and Joe being a podcaster, I'm sure Joe has had many naysayers, even up until yeah. this very day. I'm sure he would love to shove it in people's faces. So what's wrong? And he does. It, yeah, why, not, why wouldn't you? Uh, so then everyone, several times. I, I, I listen to Joe all the time. Come, all the time. I listen what's to wrong? his like, beef thing mm-hmm. with Drake all the time on the way here. So. Mm-hmm. It's, it, I felt upset. Joe, you're cool. I like, mean, to me, it, it felt bothersome, regardless of how close I feel to that type of situation, to me it felt bothersome because that's that man's experience. You don't know what he's going through, and here you are piling on to that. You're adding on to this aspect of bullying. It don't, we, we have seen in this generation that we understand now, no matter how much money you have, bullying online or bullying in real life people, that stuff drives them to off themselves. Facts. I mean, just look at the fact of celebrities in general. The reason why so many celebrities get plastic surgery, the reason why they do all these surgeries and all this mm. modification is because of the criticism. So it shows no matter how much money you got, it don't, it don't fix your self-esteem. Not for me, it would. Mm-hmm. But for some people, it don't fix their self-esteem. Mm-hmm. So for him to do that, I'm like, come on. Because it's all, yeah. And now to elaborate onto your point earlier where you said why is this happening in the black community? You yeah. know, this aspect of being corny when you want to be successful, when you want to be more than what your environment offers. People call you corny. Why do you guys think that is? I'll start with you. Well, because we're not conditioned to understand what true success is. Mm. We, we tend to look at all, only what our environment shows us. So a lot of times you look at ball players, you look at rappers, right? Mm. Not looking at a doctor. Not looking at the person who reads the books, mm-hmm. who's probably into gaming now, but back yeah. in the days, oh, well, gaming it wasn't, wasn't, it, wasn't it, it didn't have its platform. Not even, right. not even within the last now. five years when it comes to gaming. You know what's crazy too? I used to get, I used to get made fun of for bringing comic books to school, and now everybody's watching these Marvel. How many times did I said stuff. that on this podcast? How many times did I said? I used to collect podcast? comic books heavy. Me too. Heavy, bro. heavy. Me too. Heavy. So it's, 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 it's more of a, the training of a mind. So what we see is what we think we can become. That's why everyone wants to play football. That's why everyone wants to play basketball. Get that's where all the attention is at. Because that's where the attention is at. No one's thinking about these things. So when you see somebody that's interested in something that's a little bit weird, like I, for example, quick story. I had this guy who was um, 
a math whiz in, in our high school. He used to get clowned, made fun of, and stuff. Bet right? you work for NASA now. This man is worth almost $15 million. What? Right? $15 million. All the people that was making fun of him, he tells me they're in his DMs. Looking oh, for a can, job or can, can, I, can I get some my family? Uh, uh, you know those type of issues? Oh, yeah. So I'm just saying you never know what these people come. We downplay the people that are into some good things. Right. But to us, it seems corny. Not everyone can be a rapper. Not everyone can be it's, a musician. That's true. Or a ball player. I mean, my mom was a landlord a all my life. My mom being a landlord, it really like showed me touching money as a youth. So I understood, mm. you know what? That's why you look so nice, right? Mm. That's pretty much. Pro- and then church. I mean, you in church, you got to mm. fear God, obviously. But private school too, you got to button up, make sure you tucked in right. But I think it's also like how you present yourself because remember we grew up with the pants sagging times, mm. and we ain't sagging right now. But I'm pretty sure off camera y'all ain't seeing us sag either. But it's yeah, just a, it's a sometimes person. though. It's the thing in our society. It's like, what are you picking? What is it? Like, the cool, right? Well, what is the cool? Yeah, How yeah. Many, of course, we talk about this. What is the cool? You know what I mean? We celebrating what was to be cool when. Remember y'all talking about oh elevating the manifestation connected to ancestry? I, like we weren't kings before. Like I we didn't think, have kingdoms think, and all this. I think the problem is we value we put too much value into cool, and cool is very empty. It's it's very empty, it's vain. It's like people would rather run the block than own the block. And you can't have a lifestyle of being a consumer shopping either, man. Like hanging out on the block or your lady shopping on the online. It's you can't be purchasing, 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 buying, consuming, consuming all this stuff without building anything. You're not creating anything, but you consume. What are you putting back into the pot? Mm. Also, I think we need to teach the younger generations what to properly value because... That's the thing. Yeah. There's t- to, to elaborate on what you said, there's too much... Va- we place too much emphasis on consumerism, on brands, especially brands that don't do nothing for our community. Let's be, keep... I, I could talk for, for thousands of years about brands that don't do nothing for my community. Facts. And yeah, we love them. We love them because we associate them with a successful, fun lifestyle. Mm-hmm. But at the end of the day, all these brands really do is just drain a community and perpetuate or aid in perpetuating bad lifestyle choices. Yes. You know, it's like, so you clown somebody or you think that they're corny because they wear clothes that don't have popular labels. Okay. But you poor too. You broke too. You, you what you mean? You, you, right? you live right here in the same area you, I live in. You just as dusty. No, 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 I got, I got to call it what it is. Count to bullying now. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> I, I am not. Listen, I'm messing with y'all. Yo, I don't endorse bullying, but I, I'm a rapper. I'm a lyricist. I will say some mean mm-hmm. stuff. But in all seriousness, it's like. So you bully the bullies. Hey, five yeah, five with fire sometimes. It's the Yo, vicious cycle. It never ends. We bully just the talk, bully. Protect we, the young ones. The karmic ones. cycle. It never ends. <laughs> the John and I flesh and our suffering. We just <laughs> talked about this when we saw Creed. Sometimes. Some people only understand getting, getting punched in their mouth. Right? And sometimes you just gotta put them down. And in this situation, Michael mm. B. Jordan understood the situation. He's not going to. Yeah, that was a great scene. He was, like, in, in, with in, his daughter. That, that too. Like, but addressing a bully. In his situation, when he's on the red carpet, he realizes that, okay, obviously I can't just, like, like I would do in regular life, because allegedly yeah. in real life, all he does is just, like, completely ignore them. Yeah, like, right. he's super spiteful, like, yeah, 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 yeah. way. But he's like, okay, I have to talk to you, but you're not going to get off of the scot-free. Yeah, mm. he handled it with great poise, though. Exactly. Yeah, he did. So you get called corny <laughs> because you address your bully? And we have to remember that traumatic issues stay with us forever yeah. until we heal it. And even when you heal the traumatic, it's the, the it's memory still there. still there. Yeah, the so, it's so, a wound. It's so a when, wound. He saw, when he saw her, you have to, he probably had a flashback, and he had to say, look at me now. How many of us, I'm not going to lie, we all kind of stunted on somebody in Listen. our life that we are doing a little bit better. Why? Because at one point in time, we were down and out. They were kicking that dust on us, mm. right? And look at where we are and look at where they are. I really wish that True. in that point in time on mm-hmm. that red carpet when he addressed her, I really wish he had, he cued Jonathan Majors to play Mike Jones. <laughs> <laughs> they all know me. Right. 
Facts. That and boss. Guys, I thank you for that yeah, good discussion. That was, that, was discussion. Great. that was a great that was social. Great. I appreciate it. But now, Didn't you have a question for us? Make for sure content? make sure you guys smash the like button. Comment your thoughts, good, bad, or indifferent. Subscribe. And please subscribe. Turn on your notifications. Help us reach 1,000. Help us reach 15,000. <laughs> Hear the crack. <laughs> when we reach 1,000. crack. When we reach 1,000, DeJounte's going to make a cooking video for you guys. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Just apron. Just apron. Wow. No, I'm kidding. That's at a thousand. No, no, that's at a thousand. Oh, get us to the thousand. Like, I'm not recording that. We can't mute the media said they're going to get me to decide it's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. No, it's not going to happen. There's no like cooking happening on this no, episode. Like, oh, you're not going to record it? He said he's going to record it for free. No, oh. no, I'm just joking. I'm just joking. He's like, I will not be a part of that. I was just playing. I'm just playing. He's going to the He's like, I'm definitely busy that day. I have a lot on my plate. You had a question for us that you wanted to ask us before we get into the topic. I, I, I lost thought of it. I guess it'll come back. Oh, um, I wanted to ask you guys. Well, I probably this question was probably already asked. You know, growing up, you know, having a, a male model figure in your life had. Did you guys ever had that? Like, as I mean, as far as like fathers go. I mean, I, I know your situation. Did you have like a role model after that, or like with you, you? Let's start with efficient. Um, and if they taught you anything, like lifelong. Yeah, yeah. You know, my um, my, um, I, I had my mom, and my dad, and dad was always around, but he was always working. So uh, three to eleven, um, you get out of school at two forty-five, so you don't see him probably fifteen minutes, and he has to go to work. So, mm. um, and then you see him if you're up late studying when he comes home. So. There's that. And then on the weekends. So um, having him not really be there, but still being there is great. Having a great relationship for him. We're different very much. He's very not He's very not assertive, not aggressive. Very Chilly Willie is his name. Mm -hmm. He's still old school. Uh, Costa Rican wants to hang out on the beach and just hang out. Um, he's not really trying to do much for himself. Never has. So did you have any male role other than so like him? Other than him. Outside man. of that, I mean, the, Growing the, up. The, the, the work ethic was given mm -hmm. to me by my mom's brothers. Mm, my mom's okay. brothers, she has four brothers. Your uncles. Uh, yeah, they uh, beat me up on the basketball court, you know, the jab mm -hmm. steps and all that. Mm -hmm. They also were the ones that, you know, told gave me my first job when I was 16 wow. and working nice. alongside. Cool. So when I got my working papers, put in the application, got the job. And that in tail was where you learn a little bit more mm -hmm. of um, conversation we had, like women conversations. Because I was going off to college in a few years, so... There's a the thing we were talking about, and then I left that job, came back two years later, and um, at, and went off to college. But we did talk a lot of stuff, and he really gave me the the conversation of business and taking care of yourself. And when you go off, it's a pack of condoms, son. You know, there's gonna be a lot of that. Be safe. That's, Is that's there a huge. specific reason for the question? Like, what was your thought behind it? Like, what was the inspiration? I, I guess yeah. I guess it's just like looking back. I never really had it as much so like i don't know if you guys fell underneath the spectrum of like you had to teach yourselves things that you know men you didn't Van have Tide. many in your life yeah. teach you that dick van dyke so. taught me how to tie a tie watching nick at night at night so ah, shout out okay. to nick at night yeah shout out to, nick so Batman shout out to your uncles yeah. as well too it was before youtube so you know late night tv mm -hmm. yeah but he used right. to tie his tie on the television show and i used to watch it late night because couldn't go to sleep so i'm like mm -hmm. as a kid I'm like, oh, how does he do that so mm -hmm. I just practice, and that's how I learned how to tie a tie. But uh, nice. cool. well, that was before private school, even. So, to your question, did you have? You didn't have. Did you have? Not really. Role? And how do you think it? Shaped I would you? say the closest would probably be my maybe my coach. Mm. That's probably the closest to it. Like, when like did you meet that the coach? That was like football. Football, yeah, ah. fourteen. But you know, he was. He was a guy that was like, listen, I'm going to use you guys for this reason and that. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't really any, like, closeness as far as, like, a, a male role model type relationship. I would say the closest that I came to that was with my grandfather. You guys know that, of course. Mm -hmm. But he passed away when I was about 13. So right at the time and moment that mm -hmm. I really wanted him to be more of an integral part of my life, he was gone. And it's like, it was just like, yeah, being the only child on top of that for most of my life. So it's like, and then the closest I reached to that was also, again, with my boxing coach being able to teach me, like, how to defend myself. Like, 
instill that confidence within me. Like, because mm-hmm. I used to get, like, fucked up a lot. Mm-hmm. Like, I had my nose broken. I um I had multiple concussions. Um, What else? And that was from Messed football, up my right? eye socket. No, that was from, from boxing. Oh, that was from boxing. That's just from boxing alone. Football, oh, wow. I've, I've had some other injuries, too. Yeah, because you said you had to grow into football, into the mm-hmm. size I had to grow everything. into it, yeah, because I was 110 pounds. Mm-hmm. Skinny Morgan. Like, I was mm-hmm. going against dudes that, like, and I mean, did that 160, make you... 180. So did the boxing give you the confidence to to more, like, because you picked that about a teenager, right? Almost I picked right up the boxing, teen? like, early 20s. Okay. Early mm-hmm. 20s. That's when I picked it up. So about right after but, puberty. But exactly. So and, the, then, and then football was 14 on upwards to 18. So what who it? helped you through the puberty stage with the masculine? The, the, the football. The football, football helped coach. a lot. Most mm-hmm. of my life was dedicated to that. It taught me a lot about adversity. I, I spoke to Wise Guy mm-hmm. about that as well, too. Mm-hmm. Um, dealing with, like, the competition and, like, really pushing myself and being dedicated to something, really. So, yeah. I got a question for y'all. Mm-hmm. Back in high school, what, what, did you, what masculine figures did y'all have to go to for conversation? Goku. Mm. Are you serious? <laughs> no, I'm dead serious. No, he's serious. Okay. I'm dead serious. It was really Goku? Mm-hmm. No, like, mm-hmm. like, I mean, like, there was my dad, but my dad already had conversations, like, his catchphrase to this day, you know, mm-hmm. I've said it in the song, Pimp or Die. You're right. Horrible phrase, but it makes perfect sense. <laughs> Our producers <laughs> look at it like, oh, my God. <laughs> Horrible <laughs> phrase, but it was a fantastic thing to learn hey, by. Hey, listen, he was a pimp. Especially uh, when it comes to business, you know, like, when you're teaching a, a 13-year-old son, you know, telling him Pimp or Die, though. You know, questionable. Yeah, yeah. But then when you get older and you're like, well, that's kind of how life works, especially when it comes to getting a job. If you want to start a business, you got to be, it's eat or be eaten. And remember, that's right. what worked for him in his time. Exactly. So he does have some knowledge and understanding. Exactly. And he imparted onto you. Maybe it wasn't the fully best to make you adept for the current world, but it definitely was that knowledge that he passed down, that wisdom. What, what me and my brother realized as time went on, mm-hmm. even like I came into my own understanding, I think he did at the same time yeah. too, you start to realize um, sometimes people are broken before they even have kids and they don't know how to... Address it? Not even like that as well, but they don't like... You look at yourself and you say, how do I make sure that all of this poison doesn't Listen. affect the next generation. And mm. so it's like, you try to do the right thing, but then you want to put in your foot in your mouth proverbially with how you act or what you do. And then you think, okay, maybe it's just best for me to stay away, but is that, is that, may, that may not be the right answer either. You well, know? you got to give yourself grace too at the same time. But I, I mean, even when I was five years old, I realized that I didn't want to see my mom and my dad together. You just, like, I had this innate understanding that some people... Domestic, was it domestic like violence kind of in a sense? No, you just realize that they don't belong together. Like, no, I don't know what my mom was thinking. Nah. Like, uh, nah, nah. He and my dad were like, ah, he could have done that. <laughs> but it's, it's life. And then also, too, you know, when you get older, mm-hmm. when my mom, like I said before, my mom taught me all the, um, the skills I needed to take care of myself by mm-hmm. the time I was 12 years old, 13. But sometimes there's just things in life that you would need maybe a positive male role model for. I had male figures in my life that I could look up to. But it's like if they're not immediately there sometimes, it doesn't, like they're there, but it's not the same as having that primary figure. Uh, but, yeah. you know, I'm here. I'm like someone in, your, like cool. someone in your corner. Quick question, though. You did mention Goku. I want to know why. Oh, because one of the things that Goku said in Dragon Ball Z movie 13 was, if I don't, who will? And um, one of the things that I constantly see him doing was pushing himself to do things that he can't do Say that again one more time. If I don't what? If, if I, I don't, don't do, will. will. If who I will? don't, who will? Like, if I don't do this, how is this going to happen? If I can't make this happen, it doesn't happen. And the greatest thing exactly. what you said about that is I love the fact that we're picking up this torch as mm-hmm. entrepreneurs and such, and we're really carrying mm-hmm. this torch forward and continuing because I'm telling you, if we don't, there's nobody going to do it. Of yeah, course. so that's why you got to subscribe to Peep This Swan for all the knowledge. You guys subscribe for this knowledge because I'm telling you. It's only you that's going to be like, listen, I got to get tips. the F up out the bed. Mm-hmm. What about you? Before what about you? Stop um, hitting that snooze button. So same like him, my grandfather died at 13. He was a s- strong role model. But he did something that was very interesting. Um, we used to have all these conversations and he kind of knew he was going to die. So he wrote me a letter for every year up to 18 and oh, one wow. for 21. And then one 
430 and then the next one is when I get married, right? So wow, it could have been beautiful. the marriage one could have thing there. I haven't opened the other ones yet. Mm. But it's just it's just interesting like he he left a foundation that was pretty cool, but I didn't really have any role models in high school. Mm. And that's why other than my mother which was a great person I could talk to her, I could share and stuff, but that male on male energy that yeah. you need, right? I didn't have that. And that's where I ended up in pathways mm. that I shouldn't have been, even though she was great. She didn't do anything wrong to push me there, but there was times when I needed certain things done and she couldn't do it. So I had to go find protection. But, that, but that's find the, but, well, that's why you, you find, I'm not going to say oh, that's, yeah, why, you get, that's why you get pulled That's why you get fine. You get drawn to those things because they offer you those things. And even though yeah. it may seem like it's good, you know, with your intentions, it's, right. you know, Dog, I was it, getting, it could lead you elsewhere. I, I was getting beat <laughs> up. I was wearing, at Mount St. Michael's, mm-hmm. I had a blue sweater on. Oh, yeah. All right, and back in those days, it, it was color. Yeah. Yes, very mm-hmm. color. color. I, to get home, I had to walk through a blood area. Oh, I know, Every I know exactly which area you're talking about. Every day I was getting jumped. No matter how much fighting skills I had. Doesn't matter. I was getting jumped. They didn't care because I had a sweater on. Took the sweater on, they still saw me. And because they knew I was going from, getting jumped. So I joined forces opposite them so I can do that. Now, did my mom fail? No, she did a great job. But even putting me in Catholic school didn't help my surroundings. So I had to do that. But then when I got older, I had a, a good mentor, <coughs> uh, Kingsley. He helped, yeah. me. He, helped, yeah. he helped take what my mom taught me with finance. And then I took it to the next level. So in college, even though I was struggling, I knew I wasn't going to be stronger forever. I have a question. Would you, would you ever think, um, <clears throat> do you think the housing authority failed you guys at that time with the, the area and where you were living? I think I think the community failed because that's all they knew at the time. They don't have any resources. They have no with, other resources. No resources. Bro. It's like, how do you expect to raise a, a generation of good men when there's no good men to teach good men? So it's just going to tell you go to church and what church is ah, preaching is right. hypocrites. It's not. It's not going to help you with the immediate. Yeah, you have a relationship with God. What about but they're not really church ain't gonna help me when somebody they're not jump. really offering practical solutions yeah. to yeah. the spiritual right. enrichment. Not so yeah. jump practical. onto the Peep the Swamp but project it's and get over here for some content. It's if it's meant yeah. for the for the better good of the community, it should not only just give spiritual upliftment, but also practical solutions. Before, so that's what they so don't do is give you the tangible and even Yeah, we spoke there, about it in the last we spoke right. about it in the last spoke one. You were you were talking about it. Yeah. yeah. So so Getting what about tangible. you, bro? You you asked that question. So how do you feel? Did your community or your housing how did um, it affect you? Yeah, my mom, she always she kept her our house in the hood and had houses in the suburbs. And it was like Man, you got a better house over there. You would love to live over there, but we live where prostitution's like right up the street. Mm-hmm. So, and sweep, sweeping crack vials to play basketball. So, um, I mean, she they kept us in the house and kept us in school, the church, and um, playing ball in the yard. And we knew what we couldn't do, and we knew where we couldn't go, um, and where we know we can go, we'd get there and get back and stuff. I had a cousin that was older than me that was part of. Some you know group back group, in the day, yeah. and these groups mm-hmm. pulled up on me, thinking I'm him because we have the body structure and same size oh, and everything. Yeah, you showed mm-hmm. me the picture. Yeah. Right, you seen the picture? It's on mm-hmm. Facebook. Look me up. And I swear mm-hmm. that was a that freaked me out. And mm-hmm. um, do I feel like my community failed me? Absolutely, because like you said, the resources were there. There wasn't enough people tapping into those resources to be the example. Yeah, we had Dare, but I never got to go to a Dare program ever. Dare, dare, dare was you know trash. If Dare not going to teach you how trash. to fight, then Dare is useless. And, and that was trash. I mean, so if they I mean, won't I teach like, you how to throw hands. I like the shirts. I still get the shirts, right? Yeah, yeah, but they yeah, weren't yeah. keeping you your whole <laughs> community <laughs> itself. Like for instance, the community representation. I'm talking about mm-hmm. the older folk were those that were good hearted were afraid to speak up and be a voice. They were afraid to be the example. They were more, remember, like, if we think about it, America, you guys let immigrants come over in the 50s. So now you get all before the Caribbean, that. Or before that, you let the Caribbean mm-hmm. start flooding over here now. You get everybody over here. Everybody's mixing. People are hiding out. People are fearful. 
Some you let gangs come over. They don't. You let groups come over. Groups come over. Everybody comes over. Gets mixed. The neighborhoods start to like shift back then. You know what mm-hmm. I mean? And there was that separation of what was already moving and transition. Everybody's mm-hmm. transition. It was a different time. Then we get to social media and all that later. But mm-hmm. back then, so one, it was rough. One more question before you get mm-hmm. to the top. Oh no, I, I was, was going to ask go a question, but yeah, oh. you can go. You can take it. The, just real quick. I the, had a fight. Ba- ba- back back to what you Jeez. were saying. Now you have mentioned on this podcast. Mm-hmm. The trauma that you have dealt with in the household, right? Right. Do you think that if you were in that household, like maybe you were in the suburbs, would that have happened to you? The 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 SA. Oh no no I don't think all I don't think that would have happened if I was in the other environment. No, <laughs> I think even if that individual wasn't moved to our community, it would have happened. I don't think so. It wasn't even, a community. It was mostly just him then. It was mostly the him, it was the family, it was it was my family not paying attention to mm. the details with the children. Yeah. Like you gotta watch your kids, you know, pay attention to the oh, details. Yes. They, you yeah. know, um, sixty eight six to eight years old is a very important age to have a conversation about the human body. It's very lymphatic systems, reproductive systems, endocrine systems, mm-hmm. blood the, every system in the body. They have to start muscular system, everything, cardiovascular, all of that, six to eight years make old. Them. Start talking to them about that heavily. Finances as well, but you got to talk to them about their systems in their body because you want to get them ahead of that before. Nutrition's important, you know what I'm saying? But there was okay. a lot of things that were, I think, neglected because I knew we were getting state stuff and all that, but I think it was also like I have to work so hard a nine to five that I can't spend time with my kids and not spending time with the kids and leave them in the care of others. And that's what caused... In the care of others uh, is a mishandled package. You, you guys can't mishandle children. Mm-hmm. Like, when you eventually have children, even yourself, you got to be sure you're pausing. You got to be a good representation to them. You have to, everything starts in the home, like um, Michelle Obama said. We got we start the cycle, we end the cycle when we teach them at home before we go to school with that. Mm-hmm. And we're not, we shouldn't expect the school to do anything. Oh, no. The school's job, literally, is to keep them busy until they're able to enter the workforce. And you guys still don't understand that. That's like another conversation. But we gotta mm. really have these kids educated at home. You gotta be on them. That's why everybody's doing the LLC thing and protecting. This generation coming up after us is gonna get more than we got. Yeah, well, some of us get trust funds. Some of us may get policies or whatever. But this next generation after, they're getting land. They're getting property. They're getting trust funds, whatever. Speaking of the next generation. Mm -hmm. And that's good for you. Speaking of the next generation, how do we make the next generation? We're going to talk about that now. Oh, yeah. Let's Mm -hmm. talk about that. How do we make it? So Mm -hmm. I was laying in bed the other day because I do that every night. (laughs) Right. And um, Mm -mm. I was thinking to myself, you know, (laughs) <laughs> we haven't had that before, bro. I don't know, it's just a random one. You know, but you, you think about me in bed? It, it, I know you love oh, me. Oh, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> that was definitely a, I don't know where that came from. That was yeah. like, I was missing you. Listen, <laughs> listen, yeah. listen. Listen, we got to inject some coffee. He gave you but, the eye. In all seriousness. <laughs> so I was in bed, and I was thinking about this question, and I wanted to ask it to you guys. Do you guys think that there's a difference between being pretty and being sexy. Pretty slash handsome. You're pretty in, for, for women. And you're, sexy. You know, no, for the ladies. For the ladies, so. handsome. And our Oh, is this for the ladies or for the handsome? You and the ladies. Yes. Is this for the ladies? Wait, Us for the ladies? ladies, handsome? Y'all make it complicated. Y'all know what I'm wow. talking about. Uh, no, no, no. Wait, what is this? Yes. Yes. No, he just said it. Saying it. Nah, he it said handsome. No, but he said for the ladies. Oh, this for the ladies. I'm just joking. But the reason I... the difference between... The reason I ask is because I am I was sitting there thinking, and I said, you know, what if you're sitting here with somebody, and, you know, you find them attractive, but... The sexiness is sort of waned, and they don't really, you know, exude that sexiness mm-hmm. energy anymore. So that's what I wanted to know. Is there a difference between pretty and sexy? You guys go. Uh, you look like you got an answer. I think I think there is a difference. I mean, the sexy, I just feel like it's more straightforward. It, it, she just exudes a, a lustful. Well, no, nah, I don't want to say a lustfulness. It's, Sexual? It's, it's like a fine line. Like, Oh, yeah. no, it's lustful. <laughs> it's, the therapist said it should be lust. It it uh-uh. sends it sends on the signals of lust, but you know a woman can dress like in a modest way and she could still be very sexy. You know she could accentuate certain things without being too much revealing and stuff like that. So I think the sexiness is not also just a physical look, but the way she carries herself too as well. That's what I feel like. like an and I feel like yeah, you could you could define it both ways. And then pretty is like yeah, like. 
She could be a, a beautiful woman, a pretty woman. She could also be a very pretty woman inside as well. So, you know, it, it's how you take it, I feel like. What about you? That's my thing. Who, me? Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, you gonna hit you on the spot, bro. Yeah. I know, right? Yeah, you wasn't ready. Was I was. I was like, what? Right over there. <laughs> no, but... Um, you thinking about something. I, no, I was thinking about it. Like, I was just thinking about what my answer was going to be while mm -hmm. listening to you. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I, you know, I like categories. So I have four categories. Cute, pretty, beautiful, sexy. Right? Mm. The cute is like, yo, you see somebody, they're appealing. But as you're like, oh, that, that's a nice face. You move on. Pretty now, you're like, oh, there's mm. a little attraction there. Mm -hmm. But you, you, you're not really going to force now. Beautiful, aesthetically, she looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Like You're like, damn, I want That's her. like a what? Like a 9 out of 10? Like, mm -hmm. I will so say beautiful. beautiful, I would say star from 7.5. 7 7.5? 7. 7. Interesting. Yeah. Okay. All right? Okay. And then yeah. sexy is I want that. Mm -hmm. Like jaw dropping, jaw drop. Like I want, I wouldn't mind putting my strudel in her poodle. No, I, I had a <laughs> no. anyways, anyways, maybe she give me some. Yeah, noodle. man. And what was it? What you talking about? Uh, what you talking about? Uh, no, yo, man. I'm talking about woohoo. They can't all be good. <laughs> no, they can't always they be good. Can't, they can't but yes. no, they can't that's what be. I look at it. Mm. So there is a difference. I so long mm. story short, there is a difference. If there is a diff, well, just because you just yeah, said this. Uh, are you, would you pursue somebody if they're just cute? Yes. Yeah. All right, cool. Just wanted to know. Simple. Because because there's levels to this. Mm -hmm. you know, levels. Wow. Levels. Level. You feel me? Oh, yes. What about you, good sir? Difference between pretty and sexy for you? Oh, yes, absolutely. Okay. You know, I think. Do the, what's, what's, yes. what's the difference? Yeah, yeah. Break by the unbutton. You know, yeah, I got to, you know, because I think about it when, um, you know, she's beautiful. There's a, a certain aura that's going to come with that, mm -hmm. right? Okay. There's um, a natural, na nurturing aura. There's a motherhood to it. There's a femininity mm -hmm. to it where you can relax, let your hair down, and stay there. Mm -hmm. Now, when I see beauty, yeah, I'm thinking about my future. I'm thinking about my legacy. I'm thinking about oh. securing that. Mm. That is what I want to secure is something beautiful. So when she, that's... She hears me. She can support me. She wants to help me. What about mm. when you hear? What about sexy though? How was your When I hear sexy, I'm thinking like, all right, this is gonna be a quick, fun time. Like, really? Mm. Even with you, even if you're with her. Physical. Yeah, it's gonna be a physical. Only. Even when you're with her, like you're. Like, I'm talking about in a long, like you're in a committed long-term relationship, and still. I, the, you find sexiness in the beauty of, I guess, long-term, like both parties having the the attraction. Like doing things for each other, acts of service, filling each other's love, love languages. But when you talk about the appearance of sexy and pretty, pretty versus sexy, man, I think I see I see the beautiful, but I can't. I for some reason physical doesn't do it for me anymore. It's I, like I, you got to be active. You got to be able to withstand. Like I need to see. Like you got to have a regiment. You got to have a routine. You gotta have organization. You gotta be able to. Before you before you flex. continue, uh, I'll, I'll let you go first. I think, I, so think, I think he's kind of. Uh, I think he's. I think uh, efficient is on efficient. Efficient is not being efficient. <laughs> no, efficient is being efficient. I think he's onto something about the beautiful and the sexy. I, I I remember this one guy told me he's like you know like 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 in that term right you know she's mm -hmm. sexy and stuff like you know like I really love this nice painting. But I wouldn't want it in my home. Oh, that's something I say. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, yeah. and, I, and I can understand you're probably coming in from an aspect sh she's gonna bring off a certain kind of energy with her. Yeah, and pretty you know, problem. And you know, There's and you know, problems. and you I know, don't want that. and you know, it's not gonna, it's, it's not meant for the long term stability. Yes, pretty girl problems will give you limp. Woo woo. So when you go, you think, mm -hmm. well, here's, well, I, I mean, there's, uh, there's, I got, yeah, but elaborate, bro. There's mm -hmm. a difference between pretty and sexy. I mean, for me, there's, a, there are two different attraction types. You know, we can, cat for me, I categorize pretty, cute, beautiful, mm -hmm. endearing, whatever. Those are all in one category. Whereas sexual, lustful, mm. um, those are like in another category. Those are, that's a different energy. The reason why I ask that is because I'm sitting here thinking, one of my fears of marriage, because I have many fears about marriage, mm -hmm. um, is just this idea that, so what if you're with somebody for a long term, you know, you're married to them, mm -hmm. and they're pretty, like, let's say you get to marry your trophy wife. You know, why not? Mm -hmm. The oh, sexy? You, you, you know? That's sexy. Sexy and beautiful. But then as time goes and she's on. she's healthy? 
I hope so. <laughs> well, no, some of these skinny, these beautiful chicks ain't healthy. Next, next, does she have both legs? I mean, some of these, they should have one arm or two arm. You remember oh, who man. I was going to give up that? What's the name? Womb? Oh, I did not. Yeah. And yeah. I gave that womb up. I didn't want that around me. All right, that makes sense. So, I see what you know you're what saying. I'm saying? Some of them unhealthy wombs ain't something you want to. Unhealthy wombs, goodness. There's unhealthy wombs out there. But, so this, there's this all idea. Right. So, you know. <laughs> Can we all agree that we all have a healthy sexual appetite, right? right. Yes. Yeah. That's true. And if we all exercise, I'm pretty sure we do. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So what if you're with someone and they're beautiful? Like, let's, see, let's even say they're a 10 out of 10 in beauty. But they haven't really exuded any sexual desire or sexual energy mm-hmm. in a long time. And they don't really try to oh, participate yeah. in that lane. That's where my thought was going for, like, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. you know, that, that comes with that comes with also understanding what what is getting her to go. You know, mm-hmm. you got to understand what's going to get her to motivate and want to open up her box, Pandora box, to not box in that sense, but open up to you. Yeah, because some some are so deep in their mind that they will get lost and can't even give you the information. They can't even give you the map because they lost the map. Now, they lost the map a long time ago. To go along with that, too, the reason why I was thinking about this was because, you know, Keep the Swamp, podcast, all this other stuff, and, you know, Manosphere, blah, blah, blah. But <laughs> what you start to realize is that, well, there's always a, there's a lot of talk, and there's always been a lot of talk about the man turning the woman on, the man mm-hmm. pursuing the woman, but men want to feel desired, too. That is true. I do agree. You know, it kind of gets like a, it kind of gets monotonous and mundane after a while when you realize you're always the one initiating, mm-hmm. and that could also mean that we spoke about this before off the podcast. It could be maybe an inconsistency with sexual compatibility too yes, at the true. same time, or maybe she just not for you and whatever. Hey, listen, you know what a it friend could be told that me too. once. A, well, you know what a lady friend told me once. She was like, "I'm pretty sure all the women are throwing themselves at, at you." Mean to me. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I was like, no. Ain't nobody oh. knocking on my door about nothing. Like, what are you talking about? Ain't nobody even giving me a, like, a smell of whiff or something. What are you talking about? And it, it really made me feel like, well, you know what? I, I, I am a, a catch. But continue doing what you're doing. It's not, I'm not a single dude, you know. Y'all are single dudes. But I would say continue doing what you're doing. Be a catch. Be a fine. Don't. It, it's going to happen. She's. There's a place to lay your head at night. There's always a place mm-hmm. to lay but, your head at night. No, 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 no. There's a place to lay your head at night. You, you guys know Mav's lo- Mavlov's hierarchy needs? No. Is that no, no, anything? Maslow's hierarchy needs. Oh, where anything can go wrong, will go wrong. No, no that's, that's Murphy's that's, Law. Oh, that's my Murphy's gosh, law. that's Murphy's Law. I'm Maslow, sorry. <laughs> Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So it's like, yeah. when yes. you have your base needs, your you base know, needs, your base yes. Yes. Exactly. needs. Exactly. Talk about psychology. Yeah. But now that we're at level four, level five, everything is taken care of, mm-hmm. you know, now you want to focus on level six, which is a sexual relationship. You want to make sure that that's t- kind of taken care of. Yeah. When those things wane, because, pr- pr- like, okay, I'll ask the question. When you have a when you have a significant other, a woman, and she's neglecting being attracted to you, the pretty category, or mm-hmm. she's neglecting the sexual aspect, what do you think of some problems that can arise? Well, there's obviously well, infidelity. The infidelity, of course. You're gonna mm-hmm. get frustrated. Yeah. You're gonna get resentment. Frustrated. Especially resentment because the reason why you know, as you know, men's number one love language is touch. Right. And, and that's how we bond. That's how we develop, you know, our emotions for them through that act. About we you? work with our hands. After a while, if she's not doing the necessary things to, to keep you, your attention, your eyes is always going to wander somewhere mm-hmm. else. See, I think beauty could be sexy, but sexy can't always be beautiful. <laughs> That makes sense. Mm, yep. Not yeah. really though. I'm Sexy not can definitely Tell be me. beautiful. Huh? Tell me. I'm not really following. So so right. so beauty beauty, like if you really find somebody beautiful and then y'all can grow and stuff, mm-hmm. she can become that sexy that you Yeah, can, you, you grow break. into it. But sexy can't always be beautiful though. Like you can find somebody sexy, but they don't have that that beauty to them. And yeah. when I say beauty, it doesn't always have to be physical. I'm talking yeah. physical, but that overall. That makes them the total package, right? Right, right. But I think the problem a lot of times, like to your question, is w- women forget men's basic needs of sex or sexy 
meaning sexual desire. So, sexual desire, yeah. So, mm. so the, the validation. Way of, the way of the, the, how, the, touch, how they the look. Yes, yeah. yes. If they were wearing the lingerie that you like, visual you know, appearance. the visual appearance, right? If she right. was saying the sweet nothings in your ear, you know, the audio visual that, mm -hmm. that a lot of men like. You like to know I'm proud of you. So all those things turn guys on. Mm -hmm. Right. You know, when she come and drop, she's like, she drop your pants and she ready. All you right. like that. <laughs> Yo, oh, you don't like that? Oh, no, no, no I was no, just like, like God damn. Nah, this is respect. No, I was like, nah, yeah, this yeah, is so good. This is a real yeah, thing. You know, you know what is killing me, too? You know what's killing me, too, though? Man. What? When they get in the quickie. Quickies are killing relationships. Nah, you oh, know what? Quickies is needed, no, bro. No, no, no. Not long term no, 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 relationships. Hold on, hold on, hold on. That's hold killing on. the Every romance. Second. Is oh, you mean over romance. reliance hold on it? In the long term, I, and the, the, oh, you mean constantly. No, yeah, constantly. Yeah, I constantly. see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah. it draws. But sometimes you're in the bathroom, nah. you just want to, oh, you know? Yeah. Dude, you can have that, but <laughs> you wanting that, you're going to start seeing that she is not going to get, she's not giving you anything out of that. She's not, she doesn't give you sexy in that. Oh, you don't bust nuts. That you're just gonna get that, but you if you straight to if it. you're with her for <laughs> twenty years, we're saying you're with right. your lady twenty years. Uh -huh. Got you. How are you getting sexy if you're only getting quickies? Well, I'm. I'm, I'm you you said say that's are, the only type of sex. Yeah, but this, we're not talking about. Oh, like, okay, then that's different. That's but there's, there's, I, I thought you were saying the thing like that I'm saying. cancer. There's quickies. a lot of no. uh, in no. long term quickies matter, bro. Yeah, but no, yeah, in long term relationships. I think we should get on a shirt. In long term relationships, long term relationships, you're gonna look at this and you're gonna say it's crazy, but. In long-term relationships, there's less and less the activities that get done. There's less and less time because now you have kids. There's other responsibilities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's less and less that you get. So you're wondering, oh well, we're not having intimacy. Well, guess what? The intimacy you used to have, the sex you having, ain't the sex you want. And the sex you want, you ain't having. Because mm. that's what happens long-term in a relationship. You're not getting it anymore. Why? You're not getting it because neither one is communicating their needs and fulfilling it, holding accountability to it. She's going to say, I'm not going to go to the gym anymore. She's gotten lazy now, right? She don't got the libido. The libido has changed. Mm -hmm. My diet, my nutrition. Or it's him. My diet, my nutrition. Yep, same I way. was just in an event with my kids, a family event, in an arena, with families everywhere. And not for nothing, you know, working out and whatnot. And you're wearing a hoodie, but you got your kid on your shoulder and you're, you're showing them around. And I'm seeing the, sl the sluggo dads. That their moms dad are staring bots. at me. Dad bods. No, not even dad. I'm talking about tucking your belly. Them <laughs> fellas. Galino, your belly is hanging Your belly is hanging over your thing, thing. And them belly boys is right there, and the ladies is like, give me googly eyes. I don't want to go that too far. This is why. Can I say something real quick? This is why it's for all the guys. This is why it's for all the guys. This is why it's for all this is why efficient is on both sides. Top notch. This is bad for both on both sides. Cause you'll see the brolly dad and the same sluggo mom, and it looks bad for both. Yeah, of course. One it thing does. I want to say is an imbalance, and it kills the whole everything. Before your transitions are impeccable. I'm like, just saying. Like I, I'm like we're talking about sex, and, <laughs> and they you're go going somewhere, yeah. with kids on your shoulder. I was, like, I was like, you can whoa. see the chemistry, <laughs> but you see the chemistry in the relationships. You see the swings, you no, see I the dynamics, you. and mm. when you start to people right. watch, you'll start seeing this stuff. Mm -hmm. I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I'm saying for long term, if you really want a healthy relationship and you want it, yeah, about to keep, be on it. Keep having the conversation, keep working, keep building, and understand you're building, not breaking. You're building, you're not breaking, as you build, and every conversation is difficult, but it's a difficult conversation that has to have, be had. Mm -hmm. If he's having erectile dysfunction the whole time. And she's had enough of it of cheating on the side, and then tells him, "Hey, you, we, we, let's get you on a him spell. Let you mm -hmm. get, let's get a blue chew." And then what? Trojan man. He's like, "Oh well, she said I got this and this I now." Know Trojan man for that. Harry, um, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Susan's been at my house all the time, and but it happens. It happens. Hold I'm on. I'm not gonna deny it. This is so good. This is very Go. good. Yo, you no, killed we're, that right We're going to have, Just we're doing it. part two next week that we come through for the cameras. They're going to see us because this conversation is good, but we have to go. Yeah, we got so to part two. He stole all my time. Thank ah, you so man. much for this topic. No, no, no this topic was fire. It. Oh, no, trust and me. And we're going to go. continue we're this so tired, next week. Sorry. We got more to go. Makai, so, oh, my fault, bro. You know, he, he ain't gonna do it again. Don't worry. Dang, son. Eat this with 
So, <laughs> wrap it up. Goes? I'll wrap it up. You wrap Good. It up. Good you, job. that's you. That's all you. All right, we're just going to wrap it up with this. <laughs> Advice of the day is stay focused, stay determined, stay mm. on your path. Remember, vision is everything. Mm. Vision leads the leader. Keep your head up. Tune into us. Smash the like button. Subscribe. Makaya. Jante, wise guy fishing. We're telling you, turn on the notifications. <laughs> I wasn't sure where I was gonna go with who. Yeah. <laughs> but turn on notifications. Um, remember, this episode is really about just how you look at your perspective and how your optics are, you know, how you're you're putting yourself out there, how you look at yourself. We've been carrying ourselves for a while, and you're gonna see us carry ourselves in better form and better shape all the time. So um, just understand it's about elevation, um, it's about communication. It's about reaching out. It's about um, getting to the resources and touching with your community, reaching out to your communities. Hi, my name is Micaiah. Thanks for joining us. Stay tuned for part two next week. Peep this one. Will you join me?